when they took you from Africa and they banned you from being called Kunta Kenti, Rasul or Muhammad. That's right. When they took us on that westerly course, then they forced us into their names. Teach, teach. And they called us Smith, Jones, Robinson, Green, Brown, Hog, Hog. A black man called Mr. White. And when we go to China, and we put our passport down, and the Chinese immigration uh, uh, control official looks at that passport and he sees Mr. White, he expects to see a white man. And when he sees the black man, he says, uh oh, this man doesn't know who he is. But many of us as black people today, we're very foolish people. That's right. Because we don't understand why another man gives you his name. Because when he gives you his name, the giving of another's name denotes possession. It means he owns you. As long as you're walking in another man's name, he knows he owns you. You can talk as strong as you like. Yeah, I'm for black. I'm a, yeah, Mrs. White. Yeah, they're laughing at you. Because they know that when you take another's name, that's why in marriage, in the tradition of marriage, the woman takes the man's surname go ahead, go ahead. and leaves her maiden name because that taking of the other's name denotes possession. In the event of divorce, you don't walk around with the other man's name. You now relinquish that name because you're no longer with that one. What brings about insecurity is when you have a false concept of yourself mm -hmm. and the false concept of self is white supremacy they believe that they are better because they are white and as a result see when a man has that kind of silly mentality oh, hey, Hitler had the silly mentality that the white man the Aryan is superior so then at the Olympics Jesse Owens kicks up all the Aryans mm. Hitler is outraged he's angry the white man pushing white supremacy. That's why they would cut off our penis when they would lynch us. Penis envy. They're afraid of the black man because of our potency, because of our manliness. Because when you look at the black man, he's a real man. He's strong. So then they would have us as mandingos fighting one another. That's why even today, if they want to be the heavyweight champion of the world. They can't find a white man to do it. So they tried to turn a black man, Frank Bruno, into a white man. <laughs> they, called him the, they called him the great white hope. They, they're desperate. We're not allowed to play golf. Why are we not allowed to play golf? Because we are inferior. We can't play the game. But let one black man into golf. Oh, then all of a sudden there's a tiger in the woods <laughs> and he he doesn't just play golf he becomes the master we're not allowed to play tennis let black people into tennis we go straight to Wimbledon and win it in 1935 a black woman now Venus and Serena, they run out of opponents. They have to play each other. The white people cannot compete on an even playing field. They let us into athletics. You can't run like us. You let us into any field of endeavor, we dominate it. So they feel, and they become very afraid of anything that goes contrary. And so every time a black man stands up for black people. Martin Luther King, shot down. Malcolm X, shot down. Patrice Lumumba, shot down. Steve Biko, shot down. Everyone, Nelson Mandela, they locked him up for 27 years. We can count back 400 years of the most brutal treatment. Look, they took my name, my language, my culture, they killed my mother, my father, denied me religion, disallowed me to read or write for over 300 years, reduced me to the level of an animal where they branded me on my chest, branded me on my buttocks with a branding iron. And they called me three-fifths of a human being in the American Constitution. Is that the act of a human being or the act of a devil? It's for you. You answer it.
We're, we're not, we're, oh, just calling white people names. No! We're just going on the basis of what we have experienced. Black people were taught to hate ourselves. That's right. Even to this day, many of my people suffer from self-hatred. And you will see us trying to change our skin color. Teach Muhammad. When I was born in the 50s, in Jamaica, they would take, you know, like my nose, the, the, the mothers would sometimes take the nose and try to squash it, to hate self, that they felt that the baby was ugly if it had thick lips and broad nose and black skin. And so this is the, in order to counterbalance that degree of self-hatred, there had to be a teaching given by Elijah to black people that would allow us to fall in love once again with ourselves. See, because look, I know you're a wise man. And so you mustn't, you must understand that I'm a baby in wisdom, but I'm not a fool. And he's saying here today that the Caucasian is in fact the, whole, the oldest group on the planet. I beg to differ. Look, look, one of the most famous anthropologists is Professor Leakey. And when Professor Leakey went in search of the origin of human beings and human species, he didn't stop very long in Europe. He went to Africa. And the oldest bones and the oldest human beings to this day that you call Zinzanthropus, using the Latin meaning Zin and Zanthropus, meaning a black man, that oldest man, they say, is millions of years old. You went back and found one even older than that. You called her Lucy, a black woman. Go ahead. And every, every sensible historian, anthropologist today agrees that the black man is the father of human beings. Even your geneticist, Mr. Mendel. Go ahead, go ahead. You have Mendel's law. Go ahead. Mendel says that light eyes are recessive. Light skin is recessive. You can take the recessive, the dark skin is dominant, the dark eyes are dominant. You can take the recessive from the dominant, but you can't get the dominant from the recessive. This is Mendel's law. And so all of your scientists have proved Teach, Muhammad. that you can't look. Black is not even a color. That's right. Teach. Black is the mother and father of all colors. And if you want a baby, even if the woman is a white woman, the baby has to come out of the triple darkness of her womb. And this is the origin of all life. Within the black, you have the whole color spectrum. But in white, you can, two white people laying down together, they can only produce white. But two black people in darkest Africa can lay down together and produce albino with blonde hair and blue eyes. That's right. Teach Muhammad. This happens all the time. Teach and so we need to really get these facts correct today and understand that as, as gray as your, hair, as your hair is, you are listening to your father today. Teach Muhammad. This is daddy talking. Teach. And, and, and we mustn't turn. No, this is true. I'm not mocking. The white man, he came into what he called a new world. Teach Muhammad. And so all of a sudden you started to name things. Teach Muhammad. So that's why you called it America, Teach. based on, uh, what was his name? Um, Amerigo Vespucci, a Caucasian. Africa. That's why you called it Africa, based on the European explorer called, explorer called Africanus. You went into America, you called it New York. That's right. Because it was new to you. New England. You call it New England. That's right. You call New it New Zealand. Zealand. New you call it New Found Land. Because it was new to you. Teach. But to us, Teach. Teach. we were already there. Teach. That's why we're called Aboriginals. From. Ab, meaning abstracted from the Father. Teach, Muhammad. From Go God himself. Go Original, meaning the first. But you won't find Caucasian Teach. people Aborig calling themselves Aboriginal Teach. anywhere on the planet. Teach, Muhammad. Because you're the new man, Paul Teach. Newman. From one blood came all human beings, but we produced you from us. Muhammad. Look at this. Even the word human. You, you've heard the term uh, of a darker hue. Human, meaning a dark man. Human, a man of color. Humus. That's why the top soil of the earth is called humus. It is the dark organic material that gives life to the earth. Teach, teach. Whenever you take away the dark organic material or you denature it, you're left with white granulated sand. Teach, teach. Desert. 
Right. You want to um, see those of us who think that white something to glorify in? No, no, no. It's a it's a psychological thing with white people where you want to find your place. And your scientists and your historians, they spend so much time asking the question, where do we come from? Because they are puzzled as to your origin. Look at the Chinese, look at the Asians, look at the black people. All of us got dark eyes. All of us got black hair. The only one on the planet who's got ginger hair, blonde hair, brown hair, gray hair, brunette. You are the one that's gone around the world making everything based on color. You were the one who went into Australia. You were the one who went into South Africa. You were the one who went into Asia and classified people and things based on color. So that's why this man, Yakub, he wasn't a madman. He wasn't a mad scientist. He was a good scientist, and the Caucasian person is a person who is a person who is anti-nature. That's why when the sun comes out, I'm energized. Me and the sun, we got a relationship. I love the sun. I don't need no sunscreen. I don't get cancer from the sun. Me and the sun have got a good relationship. I love it, and it loves me. But white people, you got to put sunblock on. You got to hide from the sun, because now you you might get a little melanoma. Part of me on you, that means you're dead.